Hello and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogwe. And I am Tayo Sulam. All right, we have a new champion yes. when it comes to Africa Cup of Nations. After 60 years, Senegal finally won the Africa Cup of Nations. Of course, it took them three times. Yes. They won the finals in 1992, and of course, in 2019, they won the finals. But right now, 2020, mm. 2022, they yeah. won the Africa Cup of Nations. Third time is a champ. <laughs> champ. Congratulations to, Taranga, to the Taranga Lions of Cameroon. Also on the program, this time around, let's talk about the Nigeria Football Federation and their search for a new coach for the Super Eagles of the country. Well, according to the NFF presidents, there's no deal in place for Jose Pacero yet. Mm. So the wait continues. Let's see what's going to happen in that one. Also on the program, finally, Rivers United, top of the table, where their unbeaten run is over. <laughs> and Plato United were responsible for that. for that. So that means that only one team, one team, is still unbeaten in the Nigerian profession of football league. No one would have ever guessed mm -hmm. that Remo Stars, mm -hmm. after match day 11, mm -hmm. will still be unbeaten, Cecilia. Not just unbeaten, but then at top of the table. Yes, Remo Stars, <laughs> they got promotion to MPFL just this season. Mm. OK, let's get into the business of the Africa Cup of Nations. And scenes <laughs> yes. right there in Dakar following Senegal's first Afghan triumph. Cecilia, okay, yeah, I can see well, yeah, you right in the as well. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning yeah. I mean, we, the, the, the Senegalese are yeah. I mean, over the moon. Delirious. <laughs> who wouldn't be? Uh, this is the third yeah. time, you, you have said it all, the third time they are playing in the final, very close and yet so far. But last night it was really their night, yeah, uh, deservedly. Night. Mm -hmm. I think the team that really came out to win actually got the victory. Got so to congratulations to the Teranga Lions of mm -hmm. uh, Senegal. Yeah, I think it was something we've been waiting for. Imagine the past three years, uh, Senegal, they've been top of, I mean, the, the best in Africa, top yeah. of the rankings under coach Alois Sisi. Remember mm -hmm. 2002, when he was the one who missed the penalty, penalty. and they couldn't win it. Yeah. And then 2019, what happened? They couldn't. Yeah, and 2022. Got to the final again. I mean, go to the final again. Yeah. I mean, you don't. I mean, three times. Okay, as you mentioned. So you don't. You don't Top play finals back to back, back to back, and, don't and win then it. you don't win it. Yeah. So for Teddy girl to have won it, I think the players, especially Coach Alois Sisse, it shows that if you give a local coach the time, he will do the best. He's been in charge since 2015. He's been criticized, and people have been talking about him. But then on the night, well, Senegal mm -hmm. finally gave him what he so much wanted. What he missed winning as a player. As a player. But now, as a coach, mm. Sadio Mane, Mendy, and all of them creative were able to give it to him. Now, let's just quickly, confirmation of the result of what went down at late last night. After a goal less 120 minutes, mm. they had to go into penalties. And when you have Gabaski, talking about Abdul Gabal, you'll be afraid that we'll send be able to win worried. this. But somehow, for Sadio Mane to hold his nerve and play that penalty, okay. I was After reckless. missing the first mm -hmm. one in regulation time, yeah. uh, that takes a uh, serious uh, cojones. Yeah. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, mm -hmm. Sadio Mane duly uh, found uh, the bottom corner to give Senegal the first title. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. for Senegal now, uh, they finally gotten over the line. Uh, this generation is like a second golden 
generation for them because we saw that of 2002, yeah. incidentally captained by Alusisa himself, Adiga, Henry Kamara, Papa Bubba Diop, Tony Silva in goal and all those players. They came close but just couldn't get over the line. Now, this generation led by Sadio Mane <laughs> have done it. Surely they're going to be national treasure when they get back home. Absolutely, Tyon Silla. Already somebody said they should, um, the Senegalese government should announce February 6th as a, <laughs> a national holiday. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, 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 there's nothing too much to celebrate. You are talking about the golden generation in 2000 here in Lagos. You know, we saw, they, what, we they saw what, they, what, they, what they did to Nigeria. To Nigeria. And took, uh, <laughs> and the ingenuity of Dilo Sahawa. Mm. That was when Senegal announced themselves to the world. Oh, and true. from the 2000, you mentioned all the, all the players. We saw Kali Lufadega, yeah. you know, co yesterday. congratulating Ali Sisi yesterday. You, yesterday. you know, they, they have very good players, exciting yeah. players. They like to move with the ball. They have to run. They are very skillful. And from 2000 up till now, last night, they've been knocking at the door. Um, in Mali, 2002, they got to the final on penalties. They lost. Yeah. At least they missed, missed the penalty. Yeah. They also went to the World Cup and narrowly, they almost got into the semi-final. So it took them a while, <laughs> but you know, persistent, um, yeah. consistency. You know, um, consistency. And like Silla said, they, they, they trusted their coach. Mm. You know, I saw some expatriate coaches assisting him. That yeah. means that they got, they, they know that this guy needs, you know, some support, technical assistance. Support. They got, but they made him the main man. Yeah, exactly. And I saw him shedding tears last night. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Tears of course. Of so it's, it's, you know, it's tears so, it's so overwhelming. Everybody wanted Senegal to win. And because yeah, they deserved people. to pick this trophy. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. Uh, so it's the <laughs> first time African champions are... Um, for Egypt, so they're going to have to try again next yeah. uh, year to win an <laughs> yeah, eighth yeah, title. Just, they, just, they should wait for other countries to catch enough. up. Yeah. Just, just give one to Senegal. See? And, and that's what <laughs> happened. Anyway, <laughs> Senegal didn't yeah. care. Senegal went yeah. and grabbed uh, yeah. the title yeah. mm -hmm. uh, by themselves. Oh, and shit. so uh, <laughs> congratulations uh, once again to Team Senegal, uh, your uh, new African champion, Sicilia. Okay, so right now, let's go to Cameroon, the uh, Olympia Stadium, really, uh, where the final took place. Arsenal Kanakma is still in Cameroon. He will be joining us now. What it was like, you know, seeing the golden generation, second golden generation second. of the Senegalese winning the Africa Cup of Nations for the very first time. They waited 60 years for this. Alu Sisse came so close as a captain, but he couldn't. But as a player right now, he has won it. Austin, what was the experience like for you right there at the stadium? What a great chance to you guys, uh, Cecilia. What a story Senegal made last night at the Olympia Stadium. Uh, at some point, it got so emotional. People were crying. Some were fainting. Others were just speechless. Look, if there was anything that them to win it right from the quarterfinals, I think Senegal really showed that they wanted yeah. this title. And it, even in the finals, they did everything. They pushed seventh minute, man, they missed the penalty. Yeah. Um, was exceptional for the Egyptians. They was the one who kept them in the game. Otherwise, it easily would have ended setting up 3 0 for 90 minutes. You know, but yeah. football wanted us to go all the way at the stadium. It was, it was, it was, oh my goodness. You see, I struggled <laughs> to describe it. I got to realize that victory is sweet. You know, so, okay. so sweet because. You could tell that I kept saying what would have happened if Senegal didn't win that penalty kick. Uh, it would be so difficult to get a single Senegal sold out of the Olympic Stadium, but they went on, you know, to win. When Mane was stepping up to take the decisive kick, I was yes. sitting beside the Senegal is that he said, Oh, still hold my heart. <laughs> was trying to do I was going to after missing a penalty, I won't step up to take the decisive yeah. kick. You know, but he wanted to put the point, went on to win it. Fantastic win for, for Senegal. Tells us once again in our world of sports that impossible is it's nothing. nothing. And now they will be lifted that Africa Cup of Nations. And they hope that from, from, from this moment on, they will keep getting their football up to the next level. They know very well that it's not yet over. They also want to pick the World Cup ticket. Mm. They have Egypt again. Again. <laughs> That's it. I mean, um, Eiuchi, Austin just mentioned Mani stepping up, you know, to play that penalty. Because we we're thinking he missed the seventh minute to the game. And then, I mean, hearts were broken at that time, thinking, is it, is it going to be another deja vu for, you know, Senegal? But then he stepped up to play it. And, of course, Egypt were keeping Mo Salah for their decisive penalty, not Absolutely. knowing that Mane was going to convert it. How brave is it for a player to step up to want to do it again, especially in the same game? That's the attributes of um, a great player. 
on Saturday night, we also saw Ronaldo miss a penalty in regulation time against Middlesbrough yeah. in the fourth round of it's the FA Cup. But he scored during the penalty shootout. shootout. You know, you don't give up. These things happen. And the best way to recover is immediately mm. yeah. go on and take the penalty. And that's what uh, Mane did. Even after he lost the penalty in the 10th minute, he was trying to galvanize his teammates. He was telling the fans, get behind us. Yes. We will do it. You know, don't lose hope. This is just uh, the 10th minute. And he did it. So, you know, it, it only takes the bravery of such players. And yeah. you, you must give him the commendation. Some other players would have said, no, I don't yeah, want to take, I, I don't I don't want to take the penalty. That. Consider what happened to Kamara of Sierra Leone. Yeah. You know, he missed the penalty and he started burning, you know, looting yeah. and burning his house. So players are human beings, but we must give them that credit. Such players are very rare. Yeah, very rare. That's why I talked about uh, Sadio Mane's uh, Kone's uh, a few minutes ago. A lot of credit has to go to uh, Aliou Sissi as well. So we've talked about uh, a bit about that. Uh, almost seven years in charge yeah. now, going eight, and uh, has finally uh, gotten the team over the line. We're going to see pictures are coming. Uh, a little celebration <laughs> with the team. Uh, Cecilia, I yeah. don't know. I don't know where that this is a tradition. Uh, they decided to use water this mm -hmm. time around to douse uh, yeah. the. Uh, he, 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 was, he, he, he saw him when uh, you know the, when, when they won. He was crying. Mm, you know, he was crying. Fact, you know, he was so emotional. So mm. when he got to do the dressing rooms, you can see pictures of that. You know, the players pouring water on him just to calm, just to cool him down, <laughs> cool him down yeah, before you know the press conference will start. It was great for everyone to, to see. see, and it was great for us to watch. You know, that's. I wish you know our viewers can really see uh, that that picture is coming from the the, the, the players actually pouring water wow. on Alois Sisi before they even started the press conference. Of course, they all had to go out because. At the end of the day, you're looking at this man who, I mean, according to Mo Salah, he's the most criticized coach ever. That's according to their star player. That's really right there. Yeah, he's the a lot of in a, Yeah, whole yeah. lot. No, people are even saying if he doesn't win this, he needs to go. This got to but go, like yeah. he was in the final in 2019, so you can actually give this man time. And that trust, as you mentioned. I mean, look, yeah. at that, look at those big, yeah. beautiful and, scenes. And, and, and one thing we have to say about Ali is he, he's um, a great defender of African football. Of yeah. course. You know, he, he took on... Um, Johan Klopp, when he, when he made that uh, infamous comment that little, uh, little Afghan, you know, he took, he, he's, he's bold, he protects Africa, he, and he's a good ambassador of Africa. And everywhere he goes, he tries yeah. to showcase, he tells the, the, the coaches from, you know, this club size that um, without African players, you wouldn't have won all the titles you have won. And he also and rightly um, explained that uh, it was when Sadio Mane and Salah came to Liverpool yes, that they started course. winning titles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so these are the kind of coaches we need. Apart from his, you know, his competence, his technical yeah. Uh, yeah. savvy, yeah. He's, he's also a good ambassador of Africa. of Africa. You know, he likes to represent the African continent. He likes to say that it is, and it's a man that is bold. Mm -hmm. And if without, uh, if, if you are not courageous, you cannot handle a national team of Senegal. Like and like Stila said, Sadio Mane in that interview said, he has not seen a code that is um, um, criticized as um, yeah. Aliou Sissé. It's, yeah. it's obviously has a very, very tough skin yeah. mm -hmm. uh, to take all of those uh, criticisms yeah. uh, on board. Now, finally, led uh, Senegal to the promised land. Uh, the celebrations is not in Dakar alone. Celebrations in Paris as well, too. You know, Senegal and France. Yeah. We all know mm -hmm. the connection. Yeah. The fans Colonial have not slept Masters, as yeah. well. To Cecilia, look at the pictures that are coming uh, from Paris. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, just take a look at the fans. You know, the game went into the night. After mm -hmm. 120, at the 11 o'clock, was still on. And then, of course, what happened? The fans troop uh, troop out in their numbers, mm. celebrating as if this is even their own country. Mm. Yeah. Just imagine, something was happening in Cameroon. You Look know. at the distance. <laughs> and from yeah, a distance, you know, you know, and then right here, it's that's something true, else. That's true. You know, some of uh, the yeah. players, too, were originally born in France. Yeah. You yeah. know, but because of uh, maybe their parentage, um, or, or the, the connection, they decided to switch allegiance after playing in the junior team of France mm. or Senegal. So you have a lot of supporters yeah. in France, and most of these players, too, like Baba Dieng also plays for Marseille. Yeah. They have a lot of uh, connection with the French people. So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting and it's um, understandable that um, the, the, the fans in Paris, in France are celebrating. part of the celebrations you know. as well. Obviously. Let's go to Austin quickly. Austin, I mean, celebrations everywhere in Dakar, in France. Everywhere you can think, and of course, right there in Cameroon, where you are, celebrations also going on. For Alu Sisi, what can you say about this great coach? Yes, I have to use the word great coach, because it's not easy for a coach to get the final, you know, uh, 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 an edition before, and then winning in the very next one. The celebrations continue right here. We have till about 5, 6 a.m. This is the Senegalese delegation, the hotel, are just down the road and some are right there where I'm staying also. So Cecilia is singing and dancing. This is a great win for them. 
Alusi say, what can I say? I tweeted that hopefully he will get the sort of respect that he deserves now, you know, of because over and over again since we talk about this thing, it's just because as humans, we always start success with winning. Like, if of you don't course. win, nobody will see the work you're doing. Yeah. And that's why Sadi Manu said, Sadi Manu said, the man is the most criticized coach in the world. And for me, this is so much respect for African coaches because I was telling guys yesterday at the media center that we what happened with, with Carlos Coraz and his assistant receiving um, a red to the stand. If Egypt goes on to win to an extent, I'm not I'm not busy in Egypt, but it's a promotional level of indiscipline and some look down for African coaches because critics are waiting to see if she said we will lose yesterday, so they will say back to back finals and yet they didn't win. So for me, um his respect stamp shield has delivered now, and I just hope that it will motivate more African coaches, particularly ex-internationals, to find ways to get into their national team football. We saw a little bit of what Austin Aguabal can do if given the sort of support that we give to foreign um, technical advisors. So, Alucci has started something for African coaches. We see what Pixel is also doing. So, by trying to get about 10 solid African coaches doing so well, um, we else can manage your property better than you? So it's time for African coaches to step up and take charge of African football. Yeah, it's, got a, it's about stepping up, and uh, that's exactly what Ali Sisse has done for Senegal. Let's take a look at some of the outstanding uh, players that are coming from the AFCON, uh, starting with the goalkeeper of the tournament. Uh, well, it's not really a surprise. <laughs> Anyways, that guy on your screen, Edward Mendy of Chelsea, what beginning. a season he's having, uh, this uh, young man, uh, goalkeeper of the tournament. Uh, a few people out there thought Gavaski uh, had a yeah. decent shot for this yeah. Austin. Yeah, but because Gavaski, you know, wasn't, this was fully start this tournament. Guys should remember it was El Shanawi. Yeah. And then he got injured and Gavaski. I mean, and from the time he came on, he did so well. Stopped penalties, kept play shape, but check this Senegalese team up the round, I think round of 16 and quarterfinals, they were not conceding. When you keep clean sheets, it turns to the goalkeeper. People are forgetting that. Everybody's going to look at all of that, but it is the goalkeeper that takes most of the place for clean sheets. So everyone man be any time, any day. It's very critical. You want to come out and say, Gabaski, you have a point, but you can't touch the, the class no, and quality no, of men. No, 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 you're spot on. I don't think there's any arguments about it. Player of the tournament went to Sadio Mane. Oh, yeah, there's not much to say about yeah. that, right? Yeah, not much to say, but um, some people. But yeah, what? three goals Just and two, two assists. assists. Yeah. I also um, read some people on the Abu social Baka. media talking about Vincent Abubaka who scored eight goals in seven matches for fair, the fair shout. of Cameroon. Yeah. You know, this is um, it's an argument for and against, but um, Sadio Mane deserved the award, you know. Mm. Apart from scoring goals, he, you know, the kind of influence, influence. He yes. yeah. over the Teranga Lions of um, you know, Senegal. Mm. And more importantly, they won the title. So, yeah. you know, these are the, the, the edge he had over Vincent over Abubakar. Vincent Abubakar. Yeah. So, congratulations, Sadio Mane, talking about Vincent Abubakar. <laughs> eight goals, eight. which is just one shot of the record by Indai. Indai, that was in 1974, uh, has proven to be a very prolific tournament uh, for Vincent Abubakar of Cameroon. Okay, and that's how we're going to end the Africa Cup oh, of I Nations. So I feel uh, so I mean, sad. I feel so, yeah, it's actually <laughs> living here. Oh, okay, no, the consolation is the next one is yeah, just around the corner. It's just around yeah. the corner. Cut the voir. Next and year. the story is June, July. Yeah, yeah that's I hope it. it can be January and February so we can have the same we have right now. But then it's cut the voir, June, July. Is it a good thing? I yeah, why not? Why not? But <laughs> for you, for you, before we just go, we're going yeah. out to a break overall. Your, 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 how do you rate the AFCON despite all of the, uh, you know, some negative uh, publicity uh, that uh, followed it? Yeah, you know, I know there what, is no what, such thing what, as negative publicity. When they by talk the about way, negative publicity, there's no such there's thing. There's no that. perfect tournament. Yeah. You know, sometimes we watch the Premier League, you see fans run onto the pitch and quickly the camera will pan away. You know, they know how to cover up um, their own shortcomings. Mm -hmm. But, you know, here in Africa, sometimes we need to tell our stories, um, you know. Send positivity mm -hmm. over to you know, across the other world. We had a good tournament in Cameroon. Absolutely. 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 I look at the closing ceremony. It was uh, awesome. show, you know showcase the best artists mm -hmm. you know from that country, mm -hmm. and the tournament um, sailed from day one up to the final. No, apart from you know sadly the fans that lost yeah, them, their yeah, lives sadly. in the Lube, Stadium, yeah. and 
you know, I was impressed with what the CAF president did by visiting the families of those who lost their lives. And for me, it has been a great tournament. Yeah. And um, the most important thing, we had a worthy winner, deserved yeah. winner. Mm. You know, Thor you know, thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, competition, uh, Cecilia. We gotta go uh, as mm -hmm. the last one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's our last one, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's it to say. All right, that's it All for right, Afcon. Guys. Yeah, we're going to break, and of course, when we come back, we'll be talking about Pesero. Will he be the one to coach the Super Eagles of Nigeria? Deal or no deal? Um, the good news is that uh, we did not sign the contract officially. We were waiting for, um, we were still going back and forth, you know, because signing a contract is not just waking up and you sign a contract. No, you have to go through a lot of processes. And at a point, the, the, that thing stalled. So that's why I say, fortunately or unfortunately, we did not um, sign the contract. So we are still talking to him, I'm still talking to him. Because he's a very senior coach, a very very well respected coach. You don't just hang him lay, you know. We have to look at the recommendation. If for example he still has to wait still after the World uh, after the World Cup qualifiers, you know, you we have to take we have to look at what um, the nation wants at this time. What is best for the nation, he has to wait. If in the course of his waiting he gets another job, we wish him well, but we are we are, we are not going to just rush and make a very very hasty decision, considering the circumstances. No, we're not going to do that. But like I said, we respect him a lot, and um, he, won he, he actually came very, very high. Very, very, he came tops in the interview that was conducted. So yeah, we, we, we look in, the, we, we revere him a lot, but there are things now that are beyond our control, you know, because we don't just work alone, we work in harmony with the ministry, if so facto, the government. Yeah, I mean, they, they don't just work alone, so he can't really say he will be the one to give him the job. The ministry, everyone had to be in agreement for that, and the contract, well, it's still pending, it hasn't been signed, so it simply means, or safe to say, Austin Aguavoyen might just be the one in charge of the game between Ghana and Nigeria in the World Cup qualifier. Austin, you were the one who caught up with the NFL president, Maju Pinnick, asking these questions concerning uh, Pesero, if he will be in charge of the Super Eagles. Yeah, it was very important for us to, you know, get that discussion out of the way, uh, because there were, there were talks about Emmanuel Amunike, Austin Aguavoyen, and, you know, some... some um, um, coaches back home in Nigeria to take charge of the team, you know, and we don't need distractions because we have Ghana in March. So I wanted Amadou Pei to clarify that issue. Uh, and whether or not he wanted to say much, uh, he has already told us that there's no deal at the moment. So they should go on and firm up whatever deal they want to have with either Austin Aguavon and Emmanuel or Emmanuel Amunike, just so the coaches will, will get to work. Uh, start monitoring players because March is not far away uh, anymore. It was a lot of conversations, and I'm sure our subsequent bulletins and our program we're going to let our viewers see, ranging from the Super Four Cons to the Four Corners. But we know Nigeria and, and the World Cup now is so close, so it was important for us to know who is going to be in charge of the Super Eagles. So uh, he, 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 he was saying he doesn't want to say more because he needs to respect the executive committee first, you know. Uh, they, they see the technical reports from each by Austin and Wagon. They seem to like what it did uh, at this Africa Cup of Nations. So, as I said earlier with Alu Sisi, this is a time for African coaches to step up. If you need to equip yourself, go do that. If you need refresher courses, go do it. Training, do it. Just so we can start handling our businesses ourselves. All right, Austin One, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And the next time we'll be speaking with you, of course, it's going to be from our London studios. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe even the Lagos Studios. Yeah. Lagos Studios. Okay, I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See you then. <laughs> um, 
Eyuchi, he mentioned something about trust in African coaches, not just them equipping themselves, but then the Federation having that trust in them and giving them the opportunity to really, you know, uh, lay out their plans, give them time to plan, and then being able to do that. From what Amaju said, so Pesero deal is... Uh, oh, yeah, I mean... Is, uh, okay. Yeah, no, you're here. You are it's an not editor, signed so tell yet, me. <laughs> and you wonder what the issues it's, it's are. What the issue is. You know, when my um, Sporting Life um, reporter in Yaoundé, yeah. you know, I just saw um, Austin Okonakman's uh, report. I read that story from Yaoundé yesterday. I was scandalized, to say mm. the least. You know, you know, I I saw a part of the story. You know, reports that uh, said they are going to meet the executive committee. We meet today to deliberate on the technical committee recommendations. Mm. Okay. You know, Cecilia and Tayo, less than six weeks to a very crucial, crucial. you know, 2002 World Cup playoff. We are still talking about who is going to be in charge no. of the Super Eagles. You know, the, the national team exited the, the African Cup of Nations. Second round. You know, in the second round. So I thought by now, every other time. team would have been sorted out so that yeah. the coach who is going to be in charge, you know, will start mental preparation, you know, looking at players to invite, you know, discussing Start with his assistants. You know, that's when the preparation starts. starts. Not on the pitch. Not on the pitch, yeah. You know, so we, we I really don't understand. Then they are talking about Amuneke. Another story just emerged. Amuneke saying nobody has contacted yeah. him. He said nobody has contacted him. So where is the story coming up? Yeah, they've left a lot uh, for... A, a lot for assumptions. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah. so for me, the NFF has really not done well. Mm, it Absolutely. doesn't reflect... It doesn't reflect well in seriousness. Yeah. Okay. And if, if, like Amuju said, that... Um, there are powers yeah. that are beyond them. Then yeah. he should tell us those people so that we know who to hold responsible. Well, he mentioned sports ministry. Talk he, about he sports ministry. Mention... They work with sports yeah. ministry. Then if you're going to if you're going to meet with the sports ministry, meet, meet, meet in time. Okay. You know, try and get the minister's attention in time so that we can resolve. Okay, okay. Last week, Augustine Guavon met with the minister for whatever reason. Oh, he came okay. out. He didn't. Say anything. anything. It was being diplomatic. Mm. Maybe he's they be backed by. You know, so if they're having problem with the ministry, they should not toil with uh, the aspirations of millions that's of Nigerians. That's it exactly. And then yeah, he so. won't know. You give him so maybe one week to prepare, and then they fail. Then you blame it on the coach that he's not good enough. That's that's, that's where the NFF. Uh, that's that's how we bungle show. the invitation of um, Emmanuel Dennis. Exactly. And this is the kind of issues. Mm. You know, you, you, you need the coach to be in charge. You know, start sending. Yes, mm -hmm. You know, discussing with the federation. Please right. send these these uh, invitations to this so and so player so yeah. that we can get the clubs in, um, in give them enough notice even yeah. though it's, uh, it's going to be an international week yeah. but you need to also carry the clubs of course you know along so i don't i don't really understand what is going on yeah time for right. the nff to step up as well too uh, i guess you'd say uh the Ghanaians don't have a coach as well so yeah it's all good about what the Ghanaians are doing you know when it comes to nigeria the the the, the they develop this game. They want to play as if they uh, yes, are in the World Cup final. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, both teams don't have a coach at the moment. So, so it's all so balanced. It's all balanced. <laughs> Square up. Nah, that's okay. just on the light side. Let's get over the show, Cecilia. All right, let's talk about the Falcon. It's why, of course, we're celebrating uh, Senegal. Uh, Cameroon, of course, who went third place and everything. The four corners were in action on Saturday, and they've qualified for the final round of the FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup that will be taking place later this year in Costa Rica. So, three in the first half ended goalless, and of course, when the girls came back to Lagos, they felt okay. The Cameroonians, I mean, did a whole lot of antics why they were, you know, why they played the first leg. And then right here, they promised goals. And, of course, they delivered. The first goal, you know, uh, Esther, the second blessing. Of course, the third one, Esther scoring at two goals. And, of course, Nigeria sail into the final round where they will be meeting Senegal, who defeated Cameroon on penalties 5-4 after regulation time ended goalless. Yeah, Cecilia, uh, I think um, this, this stage, the four corners, you know, it's, it's very pivotal for the development of uh, women, especially um, the conveyor belts to the national team. True. Players like uh, Shikashida Dajibade, Azad Oshuala, you know, yeah. through the system. And I'm, and I'm happy these women are showing, you know, the stuff they are made of. Mm. Uh, they have qualified for the, the, fi the, I mean, the final Fine, round yeah. to, to play against Senegal. And, um, you know, but unfortunately, the gap between Nigeria mm. and other, you know, you know, countries in Africa is, is now very narrow. So mm -hmm. our girls need to work very hard. The Federation will have to give them enough um, support and um, you know, motivation yeah. so that they can uh, sail through and qualify for Costa Rica. Very they good. need to get to the World Cup. You know? I mean, that's the biggest stage for them. We have been there um, in the final twice. Uh, fortunately, we didn't win. But um, the, the importance of this you know, 
this stage, you can't be overemphasized. Yeah. 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 Yes, you will never have, there's never a perfect team. You keep working to get better. Uh, we have three goals today, excellent. Game plan, we told ourselves for every 11 minutes we must get a goal. First goal into two minutes. So we have a target in whatever we do. Um, that is how we keep building. Now we have a team that can score goals. If we can get a goal or make great chances within 22 minutes, now how do we bury those chances? That's what we keep working on. And we work on our set piece plays. Teams are not knowing how we do it, we want to perfect them. For every round, we have respect for our opponents, and that is our approach to the game. The issue of confidence, the future of objectivity, we have told ourselves. Every team that has played at this level, every one has always qualified. A button has been given, and this is the psyche for the players. I keep saying, these are players that are hungry to play in the World Cup, because because of COVID, they are not able to play in the under 17. They don't know what the World Cup is all about. So you can see the drive, you can see the hunger, you can see the objective. So now we go, that's what I said, immediately after I have, we go back, we begin to walk. One more step into Costa Rica, no. By the grace of God, not should be stop. It's not by my power or my strength, but it's by the grace of God that brings us this far. We haven't considered any goal, and we will not consider any goal to do to get our ticket to the World Cup. The, the players gave out their best and they play according to the formation and system of the coach. So kudos to them. Uh, playing in Abuja is like a dream come true because this is the first African tournament that Abuja will host. So I thank God because we opened the field, I mean the stadium, it's a victory. Not just a victory, but three goals to name. Firstly, I want to thank God. I feel so glad uh, we were able to come out with victory. Like I said in um, the previous interview, you know, we we'll come out with all force, all determination to put smiles on Nigerian faces. And I'm glad myself, my team, individually, collectively, we're able to put in our best, you know, to make sure we bring smiles on our Nigerian faces. You know, as the more it gets going, the more it gets getting um, tougher. So definitely, we also prepare our mind to meet a tougher side because if they are not good, they won't qualify to that level. So definitely, we we'll also put in more effort. <laughs> Deborah Abiodun right there, Fall Connect midfielder, reacting out to the victory over Cameroon in the penultimate stage of qualifiers for the FIFA Under 20 World Cup. Next up is Senegal, wish the girls all the best in that one. Let's move on straight away to the Nigeria Professional Football League, March day 11. We have the results for you. Let's run through before we focus on our feature matches, three of them. He ended one apiece between Abia Warriors and Nasara United. We also saw a slim win for Dakada over Canopilas 1-0. Quarry United also recorded the 1-0 win over Lobby Stars while he ended goalless between defending champions Aqua United and MFM. <laughs> MFM, that result doesn't do them any good whatsoever. Niger Tornadoes 2-1 over Katsina United. Plato ending the unbeaten run, unbeaten start of Rivers United, 1-0. That's how that one ended as well, too. And Rebel Stars, as a result, took advantage. They defeated Shooting Stars in the Battle of the Stars, 1-0. Sunshine Stars lost at home to Aimba. Fantastic away victory there for Finidi Judge. And last but not the least, he ended goalless between Rangers and Wiki Torres. Mm -hmm. So many goalless game and one yeah, is slim. Very tight, tight weekend. weekend it was <laughs> for all the teams. So quickly, let's start with Plant the... Team. Plato United and Rivers. I mean, Rivers United were top in the table. I predicted on this show that they, yeah. they were beating Rome. Might just end Might just against Plato United yeah. because of the run. Plato were up, going to uh, Rangers, collecting the points, all three points, mm -hmm. and coming home, beating the unbeaten Rivers United by a long goal. Yeah, I mean, when you go to Norway and pick a, a, a victory against Rangers, international of uh, Enugu, mm -hmm. that gives you the, the necessary confidence, the momentum. You know, to take on a team like um, Rivers United. So I think it's a good one for Plato United. Um, we saw what they did even before they traveled to uh, 
to Rangers. Yeah, you know, they, they got they, a win they, as well. They, they got a win. Um, they got a massive win at home. And coach uh, Fidelis Nechuku, you know, really, really trusting his stuff with uh, Plate United after joining them at the beginning of this season. So for Plate United, I think this could be become um, the turning point for for their title aspirations. You know, they have been winners, you know, in the past. So you can't really push them out of contention. Yeah, I mean, interesting. Uh, for Rivers, for Plateau United, as you mentioned, they've been ha having a good game, and it was Jesse Akili uh, who spawned a chance to get the lead. But then uh, that penalty that hit the woodwork, the missing, and everything. But somehow Plateau United were able to come back and get that victory against Rivers United. So Rivers United right now, well, they have to start all over again. <laughs> that building. Uh, yeah, they didn't start building the game by being but you can't take uh, so the value of very decent start to the season. Plato United, courtesy of this victory, yeah. have now moved to third on a log with 21 points from 11 games. Uh, that's the that's a goal right there. Yeah. All right there. So yeah. Plato United, a fantastic victory for them. Yeah. Let's get the post-match thoughts coming from the game. Look at the Ilechuku, coach right yeah, The charismatic <laughs> coach. Yeah. Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a colourful character yeah. on the sidelines. It wasn't easy for us. We knew this match is going to be a very tough match since from the World Cup. That's by playing a Rivers United with a compact team like this. As you can see, after the penalty, after we lost the penalty, they outplay us in the midfield, which we will be able to curtail the pressure and map another strategy for us, for us to explode and get the goal. And it, 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 it is not an easy task for us. This is a very, uh, a, a very good team with, uh, with high spirit and good motivation. It's a good game by all standard, a good one uh, at the standard of the MPFL. Uh, I believe strongly we deserve more than this. Uh, at early exchanges, we had the chance that we could have been uh, ahead. We flopped all those chances and uh, that emboldened the Plato United team to come back into the game. And uh, in the second half, we also tried to see what we can do to save the situation. And uh, they, they, they were very resilient on their part. And uh, at the end of the day, we are, we are leaving this place uh, without anything, which is quite uh, unfortunate. <laughs> no excuses are coming from for Tyre Shaw right there yeah. following uh, Real United's uh, first loss of the season. Yeah. Let's move on from that uh, to uh, the game that was played in Lagos. Mm -hmm. MFM needed to get all three points against Aqua United. It was always going to be a difficult one. Yes. Uh, they managed to get just one, which doesn't do them any favors whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, Cecilia. Terrible times for. Yeah. Uh, rough, rough yeah, times. MFM, you know, yeah. the, they lost their first game of the season to Remo Stars. They also lost to Rivers United and Shooting Stars uh, last weekend. Now they drew against Aqua United, um, permanently rooted to the bottom. Hmm. And the latest is that um, both the technical crew and the management have been sacked. So, oh. you know, so uh, okay. I really don't know how they are oh. going to navigate their way out of this situation. It's looking really, really precarious. Where they're going to get um, the three points outside their home ground is exactly. really. It's, it's, it's a huge task for them. Mm. If, if if they can do that, then uh, that could be the, 20, the miracle of the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. All right, goal. There's not much to watch in this yeah. one in terms of highlights, so we just go straight out to the post-match reactions. It has been a problem, not just in my team alone, but in Nigerian professional league now for the past uh, one or two years. We do everything in training sessions, do scoring drills, but when it comes to the, the game proper, we'll be wasteful in front of goals. So we'll just keep working. It's quite unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation, but we only had two days to work, and basically we can only work on defending. And today the boys have shown that they can do even more better. We'll go back, we'll see what we can do. I believe we'll do better in subsequent games. Welcome back. We still have one more game to talk about in the Nigerian Professional Football League between Rangers and Wiki Tourist. And um, yeah, a bit of controversy about that one. Oh, yeah, let's uh, take us through that one quickly. Yeah, the, pictures are coming the game ended right goalless, as you okay. can see. But um, during the course of regulation time, Wiki scored a goal okay. that um, was ruled out you know, by the referee. Then, um, but that was a good goal. Yeah, well. It looked. Yeah. Looks well, like a good goal. Then, um, well, the, it was a judge that the goalkeeper caught the goal that um, Wiki 
who scored. That was Rangers goal. Rangers yeah, scored. Rangers, and, yeah. You know, was ruled out by the referee. That was a goal by Rangers. Then the the wiki also scored, but the, but the referee had judged that the player infringed on the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper caught the goal, ball, the ball, the ball, and um, the the attacker. You know, made contact, had so, with him, and okay. the referee ruled. So infringement. They, yeah, infringement. And the fans were angry, mm. and um, you know, started throwing, uh, pelting the referees mm. with the stones, um, you know, sachet water, and all that. Mm. You know, this is this is not good for. Not great advert at all. You so know, it was a tale of two disallowed goals from both sides. From both sides. When, when so Rangers, what's the what's the what's the, why are we crying? I mean, when Rangers okay, scored, yeah, and that's it was infringement, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. infringement, oh. right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And the surrounding I think it's a good call. Yeah, so. I, I think the, the players and officials too should, um, you know, mind the kind of gesture. Sometimes the way you behave, your body language could instigate the fans, yeah. you know, to go after the referee. But um, it's now it, it behoves on the LM. So that's that's it there. That's it there. That's um, the yeah. goalkeeper. Hmm. Yeah, then the player was there? right there. Yeah, yeah, I think it is because he was right there where the good ball was trying to catch the ball. Anyways, and I think he fell down. So I think that that's that not even the issue. We get to see these kind of calls, uh, contentious calls yeah, uh, all, all the around time, the world, the, the, the leagues in the world. So Thank I, thankfully, the LMC will have a video to look at, and um, yeah, whoever know, deserves to be punished yeah, uh, be gets punished, punished there. Because and the, the fans should also, you know, be. Be given a different orientation. Exactly. Football is not. Look at it there. Yeah. The, 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 the fans, you know, getting agitated, throwing um, uh, pebbles, uh, throwing um, uh, stones into the pitch. And this is really there are there are measures uh, to yeah. to deter all of these kind of behaviors. Uh, you know, so hopefully the NFF, uh, I mean the LMC, uh, come down hard. We, we have seen we have seen teams kind of incident. They bad lost at home. This is into reverse United. They went to. Like yesterday, they went to Sunshine Stars in the and they won. Yeah. You know, if you're a good team, it has shown this season yeah. you can go anywhere. We keep, we keep, we keep our decent side. The fans should be told that their team can also go away mm. and win the game. So it's not a do or die affair. This no. is just um, a week 11. 11 yeah. Yeah. So, so it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be so, so much um, acrimony. Look at, I mean, look, look at, at these look pictures. At the fans, look at that. You know, trying to nah. get at the referee, you know, being shielded nah. by the, the policemen. Mm. Thank nah, God you have security not, at the stadium, which yeah. is really a plus for, you know, the FA. It's unacceptable or, 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 still. Yeah, but it's not mm -hmm. as acceptable. That's what I'm saying. If not for the security men who escorted the referee, just imagine what would have happened. It's, still it's yeah. shocking that um, fans are allowed access to restricted areas. Yeah. You know, in, in the stadium. And is it shocking to you? Know, it's shocking. In it's Nigerian shocking, stadiums, really. shocking. That is not a common occurrence. We get to see that a lot. Yeah, so that, that's, that's uh, what they really need to stop. Right. It's only at international games you see that, okay, because you have, you know, the people to actually prevent that. But I feel what they oh, do when they are hosting international matches, can I so bring it to you know, when no, they are hosting I saw it NFL at uh, Raymond Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. The fans don't have access to visiting team. They're waiting. We, they are, their own um, gate is different from where the fans are allowed to. So I think the we should put them. The story where they were guys, chasing players out of guys, the, Okay, let's not go back. Guys, go back. Guys, that, was, that was in Shagamu. <laughs> yeah, that was in Shagamu. Yeah. Okay, but right now it's not like yeah, that. Yeah, that was in Shagamu. They okay. have their own stadium. Okay. I think they are, they are okay. Okay. The All bottom right. line is there are still so many issues out to be resolved that when it comes to Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The fans, fans trouble, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so after match day 11 is Remo Stars on top with 23 points. Rivers second and Plato United. Third, let's get on with the show now, guys, and uh, let's go to the NBA. Not the NBA in America just yet. We're going to start. We'll come to that later, but we're going to start with the NBA right here in Nigeria yeah. over the weekend. The NBA launched its Lagos office. Uh, Cecilia, I'm very mm -hmm. excited uh, for this one. I can just, I'm starting to think of all of the benefits uh, it's going to have for the development of basketball in the country was seeing pictures are coming uh, from that uh, event. Uh, and uh, Oye, yeah. uh, Cecilia, it is fantastic. We saw the, the celebs that were mm -hmm. out. Uh, we saw the, the NBA Africa CEO was also on ground, as yeah. well as the new head yeah. of the Lagos office, that's Bim Sola Abudu. Yeah. Yeah, the, the benefits are enormous. Enormous. I mean, um, we all know what the MBA stands for. It stands mm. for excellence. It's the best. It is. No, so, so when you <laughs> have an office here, you right can also, here. it means you can tap into the template, whatever. If we are smart, this should help us in, you know, several ways. Mm. You know, develop the players, get a template for sponsorship, you know, you know help us. Because domestically, we have gone because of the problem. Yeah. I hope they can get it right. Yeah. I hope they can mm. sort out the issue in the MBA, MBBF so that, we can adequately benefits. tap, you know, from the benefits from this of kind this of uh, Because uh, during this particular event, we saw all uh, the strategic investors that were around, and partners, former yeah. WNBA and NBA players 
uh, were also yeah. on ground. Yeah. So fantastic uh, development. Uh, the NBA now having uh, its footprint right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Let's uh, listen to Bimsala Abudu. She's been talking about uh, the likely uh, potential benefits of this situation. We also can listen to Victor Williams as well. It's important, I mean, it's a big deal um, for us. I, I'm excited for Nigeria, what the brand being on ground represents for us. If you look at the NBA, majority of the Nigerian players, a lot of them, they, they got basketball until later in life, and they've been able to excel at the highest level. So, I mean, you can just imagine, once we develop a very robust talent pipeline and we develop a basketball ecosystem, you can only imagine the type of talent we'll have coming out of Nigeria. So, I'm very excited for us. It's once the, up, the announcement was made about the office opening, a lot of them, actually, some reached out to us already and some have reached out to me personally and they're really excited that the NBA finally has its own footprint here in Nigeria and they want to be a part of that. So whether it's from grassroots programming to whether it's from experiences like this, they want to be a part of it. So I'm very, very confident that in the coming, I'll probably say even this year and the coming years, we'll be able to have a platform to bring a lot of them back home. We've opened an office here and uh, Bemi Shola is going to lead that office for us. We're doing uh, activations like this. Uh, actually, over the last eight years, we've been running a program in Abuja called Power Forward that has reached uh, hundreds, thousands of kids uh, in terms of basketball uh, education, basketball skills, as well as uh, exposure to healthcare topics to make them better citizens and, and better, uh, uh, more healthy individuals. So um, our engagement with the country has been in place for quite a few years. What we're going to do going forward is ramp up that, that engagement and make it more visible. <laughs> exciting times of yeah. Nigerian basketball. We're all very excited. The players, I imagine, are even more excited than us. All right, let's go to the NBA itself now. Let's quickly run uh, through the results of the games that were played uh, this morning. Uh, the most uh, conspicuous result is the one between the Nets and the <laughs> Nuggets and the Brooklyn Nets. Believe it or not, they've lost eight, eight. games in a row. Cecilia, yeah. repeat the name again. Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets <laughs> have lost eight straight games in the NBA, and because of that loss, they've now fallen from the top of the Eastern Conference to number seven, seven. meaning they're no longer in the playoff picture. They're in the playing picture, and they've got the work cut out. They were playing without James Harden One. once again. Kevin La Durant, two. Out. Lamarcus, Lamarcus Aldridge, Aldridge three. Joe Harris as mm -hmm. well. So those are very crucial players. So uh, perhaps uh, that's a ready-made excuse. Uh, four, but I don't agree. That's not enough reason to be losing eight uh, straight games. Uh, let's quickly get a thought uh, coming uh, from the coach, uh, Steve Nash. Obviously, he's very disappointed, but then he's still proud of the effort of his team. All right, let's, uh, if we can get that track going, let's just quickly, time is fast, it's fast spent, let's yes, just quickly look take a look time. at the papers right now. So I'm going to start with the Sporting Sun. Oh, uh, Yomuchi, yes, this is yours. And the Osimen, yeah, Sporting Life, yes, I'm starting with Sporting Life right now. Sporting Life here, Osimen back in business, as according to Sporting Life, scores uh, first goal, the first uh, start, he scores on his first start for Napoli. And of course, they were not really praising the striker. This is your paper, and we are happy that uh, Osime is fully back. He has, he has come on as a sub. Yeah. He wasn't able to, but his first start since his return from injury, he's getting a goal. Yeah, since he got injured in November, underwent injury, yeah. and then underwent surgery. surgery. Uh, this is the first time. Gradually, he's getting back uh, to his groove. Uh, he, he scored in that uh, game against Valencia away. Um, I, I think it's a good one for us going into the World Cup playoffs. Yeah. We need Osime. You know, for me, we really missed him at the yeah, Afghan tournament. So we need him. Um, in, in good uh, mental and healthy situations so yeah. that, um, you know, he can help us get through to the World Cup. And um, incidentally, uh, Tyrone Ebuehi was yes. involved in a bizarre incident <laughs> in that game. He collided yeah. with the referee yeah, and um, got he, a... he got his head broken and had to be stitched up. Then towards the dying, dying minute, he got a record. Red card. You know, <laughs> for his troubles. Too bad. Not a night to remember yeah. for... Uh, Tyrone Tyrone Ibuye. Ibuye. So, yeah. the next paper. Yeah, Sporting Sun is the next one for me. Amunike denies Super Eagles job offer. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Says NFL yet to make any contact. And same Sporting Sun that reported on Friday that, well, they've signed a governor and Amunike and all that, that together. But right now, 
Understand? Okay? It's yet to get it. Moses Simon failed to save nuns, okay? Another one, Okoye conceded embarrassing four goals. Why is this making headline? Leave oh, the no. man alone. Uh, goalkeepers goalkeepers concede. Goals. I mean, That's Leicester City were beaten by, yeah, Nottingham Forest, right? Yeah. The FA Cup holders. They were bundled out of the FA Cup. A goalkeeper was in post, right? Yeah. But he's not making the headline. And Kelechi Hanna just scored a goal. Yeah, he scored a goal. He's not making the headline. for mm -hmm. Leicester to get through, yeah. you know, fortunately. So the others knock out. Nothing for us responsible for that. Shocker. Okay, the last one, Tyle, yeah, 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 which is a complete it, spot. Yeah. Okay, let me just go through the last one, which is a complete spot here. Complete spot right here. Ghana needs a miracle to beat Nigeria. That's according to Mohamed Polo. That's a former Black Stars player. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Need a miracle. <laughs> no, we could be mind games. We shouldn't um, get okay. carried away by such comments. Okay. No. Um, the game has not been played. Yeah. We need to prepare, get things sorted out. And the NFF really not doing that. So, so I don't believe in that story. Okay. Both so. teams, you know, are in contention. Yeah. Anybody can pick the ticket. True. Yeah. Anyway. True. All right. We got to go. Enwuchi, thank you so much for coming on the program. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you all for watching as well. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Tayo Salam. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Have a fantastic day.